The following is a brief video on point of sale basics within CounterPoint. The starting point for point of sale tickets in CounterPoint is to go to touch screen. You can find this by going to point of sale tickets, touch screen. Very good idea to go ahead and make that a favorite. So it's right here and easy for you to access. When you click on this button, you'll be prompted to log in. You'll put in your user and password and this will take you into point of sale and counterpoint. Just a moment to familiarize yourself with the layout. There is a number of buttons across the top. These might vary based on your install, but some very common buttons here might be a customer lookup or the ability to put a ticket on hold or recall it. There are some buttons here for voiding a current line or in this case, voiding a ticket. Whatever buttons you might have at the top of your screen, you can hover over the boxes and get an idea of what your buttons do. Over to the right, we have a group of buttons and this will change based on what we're doing. In the bottom right, there's a group of buttons called the fixed rows and these stay here no matter what we're doing. We have of course an area for totals and as we start ringing up line items, you'll see your line item displayed here in the middle. That's just a very quick overview of how this screen is laid out. And now we'll go through ringing up a basic ticket. On my layout, I've, I have a button for start ticket. This may not be required if your line is already green and you're not capturing who the customer is for each transaction, you could begin by immediately scanning the barcode. In my case, I have a start ticket function, in which case I prompt for the rep, sales rep, and continue with this ticket. If you're at a station, you most likely have a barcode scanner, at which point you would now scan the barcode. I am going to just simulate having a barcode scanner by typing in an item. If I didn't have a barcode or knew the item number, I could click the magnifying glass, use my keyword lookup, and look up a particular item. In this example, I'm just going to put a few more items here so you can see what this looks like. If there are multiple quantities on an item, I could scan the item multiple times or I could scan the item and somewhere on your screen, you probably have a quantity button and I can put in a quantity. At any point, I could remove a line from the ticket by highlighting the line. And in this case, I have a button for void current line, which will take that off the ticket. At this point, I'm going to go ahead and put on just one more item as an example. We'll do a pretzel and now I'm ready to pay. On your touch screen, you will have a button that is labeled either pay or tender. You would click on that button and from your list of choices, you will choose a payment method. In my example, I'm going to choose cash. And in this case, I will put in, if they had $600, I could click that and say, okay. And it will tell me change due here. And your system could be set up to auto print the receipt, or you could make it so that the employee could ask the customer, would you like a receipt? At which point they would click this. And for this example, I am previewing the receipt, but in the real world, this would then print the receipt. So that is an example of a very straightforward, just going through and ringing up the ticket. Other things that you might do with the ticket are being able to reprint a receipt. If for any reason I needed that receipt again, I could go down here to reprint ticket and the most recent ticket will come up, but I could click the magnifying glass, find a ticket from earlier today and reprint that ticket. Other things you might do with a ticket once it's been completed, there may be a need to void a ticket that's already happened. That can be done by going to more buttons and then to ticket functions. And this is referred to as void a completed ticket. If I click this again, it will default to the most recent. I could use my magnifying glass and choose a ticket from earlier today. That's usually a manager function. Other things we might talk about when it comes to a ticket. I'll go ahead and start another one here. We'll just throw on a few items very quickly. Some pretzels. A 
we mentioned before that we could change the quantity and we should also talk about returns. So in this example, I already have a few items and maybe I'm also returning an item. So I could click the return button. This will change the line color to red and then I could go select whatever it is I might be returning. In this case, maybe it's an umbrella and I could select that item and put that on the ticket. I will point out that the line colors in counterpoint are important. Green lines are sale or ticket lines is what that means. Red lines are return lines. You'll notice that quantity is negative. At this point, if I'm done with my ticket, I again would go to pay payment. If the amount that I'm returning is greater than the amount on the sale, this would be a negative amount. I would still go to my pay codes and choose my payment method. And that's the method in which I would be returning the difference. In this case, the amount is still due. So any payment I choose is going to be charging the customer. And I'll go ahead and say pay ticket balance. In that example, I was using the return line function. There's another ability in counterpoint for returns called validated returns. And the point of a validated return is that instead of just returning any item, I can go in. If I had the receipt, I could scan the barcode at the bottom of the receipt. In this case, I will just look up the ticket based on a date range. And let's say I'm looking at something from December 6th and identify the right sale. And I can pick and choose what I want to return on this ticket. The huge advantage of validated returns is number one, we're verifying the original sale that's tied back to the original customer. And we're going to return the item or items that they exactly bought at the price they exactly bought, which is good news for a retailer. I'll go ahead and select these items, click OK, and you'll notice that puts it right back on the ticket. If this had been originally paid with a credit card, you may have the option, would you like to return this to the original card? In this case, it was paid with cash originally. I'll go ahead and do go to my payment, choose cash, and complete the ticket. That is just a brief overview of some of the functions and abilities within point of sale. As always, if you have any questions, please reach out to us at lparetail.com.